What is up, friends? Rob here, the Medicare Minister, and I'm back with a brand new, fresh, spitting fire leadership podcast. And I'm with Leslie. Leslie, I want to make sure I say your name right because I have a unique last name. Is it Schofield? Did I say it correctly? Yeah, you nailed it. All right. Mine is uh, Sevilla, but I have to say Sevilla here in the South because they can't pronounce. I get called Rob Saliva, Rob Sylvia, <laughs> Rob Savalas. I've been called everything. So Miss Leslie Schofield is with us today and I know she's going to bring it. So Leslie, we just say hey to everybody real quickly. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. This is so exciting. Thank you so, so, so much for thinking of me. Absolutely. Thank you for being generous with your time. But before we dive into your story today and before you share with us some leadership and success principles, I just want to remind everybody to please subscribe below, click the little notification bell so that way you're alerted every time we drop a fresh interview like this every Wednesday, as well as our Monday motivations uh, to help put fresh wind in your sails. Because I truly believe this that all of you deserve to win. You just have to see it for yourself. So Leslie, thank you once again for being here. And what I always like to do is start off with a little bit of your story. Can you tell us a little about where you're from, uh, how you got to where you're at today, and then we'll go from there. So I'm your newest subscriber. Um, I'm totally just all on board with everything that you guys are doing over there. Um, and I think Mondays are super important. I mean, I follow Eric Thomas and, you know, thank God it's Monday. Yeah, we can't that's right. Without Monday. So it's kind of like, you know, um, getting that fresh start every single week. And it does, I actually start Sunday time blocking for Monday yeah. um, just to make sure. So yeah, Monday is super important. So um, just a little bit of background about me. Um, I am not telling you my age. I have uh, three kids. Um, one biological, two um, from my husband's previous relationship, and I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I have a degree in psychology um, and a minor in exercise science, so I always wanted to help people somehow. I just, I've always been, you know, a big Jillian Michaels fan, and I thought if I could just get somebody on a treadmill and make them cry, then I could just work out all their emotional issues and you know, basically all that did was teach me uh, more about myself. Um, and really that's what psychology is. It's, you just dig in and find more about yourself. <laughs> it's really right, wild. right. Yeah, so I worked, um, I've worked at a, at a myriad of places. I started a, a catering company and a little um, taco shop. It was just a little taco shop. My first job was at the YMCA. Okay. Um, I started at a taco shop and developed this huge line of catering. Uh, we started delivering to all the pharmaceutical reps in the industry um, because they had a ton of money back in 2003, four, five, and six before the market fell and they lost their budget. Um, but we would deliver, I would deliver chips and salsa to each doctor's office with a menu as a sample. And the pharmaceutical reps would call me and we would get tipped out the wazoo for doing it. And I actually had like 15 drivers and we only were working out of one shop. Um, then 2007 happened. I don't know if you were affected by that. I, I like remodeled a whole house, lost that. Somebody got a brand new remodeled house for nothing. Um, and the pharmaceutical industry went away. And I actually, um, actually was working two jobs. I worked for Hilton um, at the time. So I went full time with Hilton. So I've been in hospitality. I bartended. I've been a Starbucks barista at the Hilton. I worked for Marriott as well overnight shift and that led me so it's always been sales but it wasn't like hardcore like at the Hilton we had to sell out the rooms and I never got into the sales department where you're like booking rooms it was always just in the concierge level and and dealing face to face I've always had to be with people one-on-one -on -one. and um from there I landed a job at Ashley Furniture. The largest furniture store in the state of Virginia is in Virginia Beach. And I was their number one associate wow. for four years. Um, but that meant every holiday, every single weekend, yeah. Yeah. every single night, right. then you, you had to sell every mattress, every warranty, every mattress yeah. protector, every, everything. Sure. And I became an expert. And um, my, my best year was $86,000. Wow. And I worked my butt off. 
yeah. no time, nothing. So we hired this guy. I, I managed to make it into an entry level management position, just one, running the floor. Yeah. Um, and we hired this guy who was sitting at one of, you know, when you walk into a furniture store, like it's like the car. Yeah. Lot, right? Uh, right. So um, we, it was like Memorial Day weekend or something. People were flooding in and this guy was sitting at a table and I'm like, Keith, come on, man. There's people coming. <laughs> we got to go. Yeah. Right. And he's like, oh, I'll get to it. And I'm like, dude, what kind of, this is the biggest weekend ever. What are you doing that I need to know about that's going to allow you to sit with all these people coming in? And he was like, I don't know. I make like $5,000 a month part-time doing life insurance. And I was like, light bulb moment. You ever have those divine interventions where you're just yeah. like, Nyeop. yes. <laughs> so um, I basically said, stop what you're doing. Give me all the information. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I got licensed. Um, it was with a, like a, not, like a, not a captive agency, sure. but yeah. you know, it was low compensation and recycled leads. And I yeah. knew nothing. I was just yeah. happy to be there. Yeah. So I door knocked my butt off and that was the start of all of this. Okay. So now if you don't mind, because the m many of the people watching this are in our in, in, uh, industry insurance, whether it's spinal expense, mortgage protection, we do a lot of Medicare here, life insurance, whatever the case may be. Do you mind sharing a little bit of your success that you've had? Not necessarily to brag, but just so people know that you actually know what the heck you're talking about. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So at 8% this year, I, I had the um, chance to do a breakout session and I actually broke down my months in the business. So like month one, just door knocking, I cleared $10,000. Um, month two, no, no health license. Okay. This was just straight life. Month two, I cleared um, 15,000 and then I left because I figured out what was going on. So uh, I went independent. I finally became a broker. So I had like one month off. So this was June. I got licensed July and August crushed it. September took a month off. October contracting, November 15,000, December 17,000, bam, just kept it moving. And um, my best month in the business was um, $78,000 issue paid. Wow. And that was without um, a health license. But that moment was pivotal for me because I had to grind. I mean, I put the I in grind, okay, <laughs> to do that. Um, right. So somebody was in, a little birdie was in my ear saying, Medicare, 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 um, hamster wheel, you're not going to make it, adrenal fatigue, you're never going to get off. I got slapped with about $50,000 worth of roll-up debt mm. um, that I paid for, and I, I built a team now. I know how to build a team. Yeah. So I did all of that, but um, wasn't doing Medicare. So the minute I got my health license and I learned Medicare. Um, I just, I crushed it. This will be my third, fourth AEP. Wow. And, and listen, I want to stop there. I was, I was taking notes. That's why I, I wrote down a lot of things you were saying because I want to bring them back up. But listen, I want to stop here just for a second. There's many of you that are in the life space, FE space, mortgage protection space that are passing on Medicare stop and don't do that anymore. Maybe get with somebody like Leslie or find someone, a mentor, because I was told to Leslie for a long time. I started in the financial advising, went into final expense. I unfortunately got, I won't mention names, but got involved in one of those crappy low commission based uh, companies. I think we all have to go through that, unfortunately, to get to where we're at. And, and so I believe that life happens uh, for you, not to you. That's the mentality you got to adopt, right? Um, but don't pass on Medicare because it can be one of the biggest blessings that uh, you could ever experience in your, your insurance career. So I did want to say that, but I want to go back to one thing that you said. Um, obviously, I'm very passionate about my faith. That's why they call me the Medicare minister. I've been in ministry for over 20 years. And so I'm a firm believer in divine appointments, whatever that means to all of you out there watching. Yes. Uh, I believe in the God of the universe. Okay. Okay. But I actually had a moment like that uh, about three and a half years ago, was a business owner, serial entrepreneur. It sounds like you're the same way, tried everything, been in the retail grind as well, but never gave up, no quit. But about uh, 10 years ago, I just went through a really bad situation, maybe a little bit longer, about 12 years ago, where I lost my business because I made a bad business decision. 
and just life uh, fell into a job mentality. And I met this gentleman about three years ago and we had lunch and I believe God truly used him to re-spark that, that alpha lion in me. It was laying dormant, that fire. And so I'm a firm believer in community and your tribe and make sure you're hanging around the people that can pour into you. And it sounds like you believe that as well. That's ex exactly what happened to me at the furniture store because when he brought in the guy, his guy to recruit me, it was a God stop. My mom calls it a God stop. Yeah, God when stop. You want something and you go and go and go and go and, and you just you just can't seem to get it. Yeah. It's God stopping you from doing that. Sure. Like he's just God stop, pay attention to the clues right. around you. So this was just huge. So that first deal that we were in for me, man, it was it was such a blessing. The yeah. leader that I had there, we are still friends to this day. Wow. Um he literally taught me the business. And then the next deal I got into wasn't that great either, but I <laughs> think I was very, very, sure. very successful there. I was in the top five out of 10,000 agents wow. for, for the three years I was there. Big pregnant too, huge yeah. running. Best month in the business was pregnant, big pregnant. Um, but, and I, and so I tell people like, it, my advice is to absorb and take from everybody. You need to be like a robber because I literally like took bits and pieces of people. I can name them off and, and they, they are mm. my presentation and, and, and what I've learned. Sure. And I put my gifts and my, my spiritual gifts on those oh, man. and I tweak them and I'm helping a lot of families. I know yeah. one, one of those people yeah. is um, in the current in the current help mode is Justin. Justin is probably so sick and tired of seeing my little message pop up. I hit him every quarter with one question, <laughs> just sure. one question. Right. I mean, he's just been great. Yeah, and and I love what you're saying. I mean, you're, you're spitting some serious fire early on here. And I love the fact that you learned at every stop. I think so many people get negative, uh, they, they, they think that, oh, it's a bad situation, but it sounds like you have this mentality, just be good at every stop, be good where you're at until you get to that place where you need to be. Yeah, I, I really want to say this because this just came to me. Please so I, I co-host a group called the Insurance Ladies on Facebook, right. and we are this close to breaking 5,000 licensed women wow. across the United States. Yeah. And I see a ton. This is a mind shift that I have had to learn. There is so many people, even in the other groups that you're in, you know, um, just, oh, this isn't working out. I'm yeah. in the worst deal ever. Right. I can't believe I'm not getting the support. Right. I'm not getting this. These leads were bad. Right. Just what if I, my advice to you is to shift your mindset mm -hmm. and look at it as an opportunity. What I did was if I didn't get a sale in every single house, I called my manager and said, I didn't get a sale. We need to break it down. And I mean, I went through the whole thing. They were sick and tired because I was running eight appointments a day. So they were either getting a, a call because I got the sale call because I didn't get the sale or call because I'm trying to help close the sale. So I was talking to my manager, every, however many appointments you've got, that's how many phone calls you need to make to your manager every day. Right. And I tell my team that I'm like, you call me in the house, out the house, above the house, on the side of the house, <laughs> you've got to call me. So I, I love that. And, and you're taking us to, to Leslie Church here, right? Like if you had an offering plate, I put money in the offering plate right now. You're, you're bringing it. <laughs> You're bringing, it to, <laughs> you're bringing it, but where, let me ask you this, because I wrote this down as you were talking, where did that servant leadership uh, mentality come from? Was that something that you've always just been a servant leader, someone that just always wanted to help people? You know, I had a feeling you were going to go there and I wasn't sure how I was going to answer it. And I've been asked that question so much. I don't think I can answer that question without giving you just a little bit of background Please do. about my um, my family situation. So, in my and my family's phenomenal, but in my real in my intermediate family, like the ones I see every day. Okay. My dad um, is a phenomenal man, and him and my mother have been married thirty. I'm gonna give away my age, thirty plus years. Okay, and. Um, you know, he landed these contractor jobs, government con that just ended. 
So he's sort of had a string of bad luck with jobs. He had great income down. So he's always worked two and three jobs. Um, my mother was born without an esophagus. So her stomach was swung way up here. Mm. Long story short, tons of medical issues. Wasn't supposed to have children, wasn't supposed to live. Out pops number one. And I'm like the best, healthiest baby. My mom threw two blood clots and almost died. Wow. Four years later. So that, that, so I knew this from one to four, right? I had always been kind of, she always yeah. likes to joke and say, I came out of the womb, like walking and talking to potty training and all that. But the truth is, is I didn't, I just was a fast learner. I think that I, those were coping skills that I had, I picked sure. them up fast. I, I noticed very early on that I got to figure it out. Then no babies, Judy. And what do you know, out pops baby number two, my brother, four years later, and my mom had a healthy delivery, but my brother um, is disabled, intellectually disabled, special needs. So we've got two people on decent in our house um, and a dad that had no life insurance. So I said, I can't work for the first gig because they can't even insure my family. Once that's why month two was so crucial for me because I started realizing I can't serve families this way because I can't even serve my own. Sure. So then I came, became a broker and got everybody insured. I bought every policy under the sun. <laughs> so, right. But I think that to answer your question, um, I've been in service mindset early on, um, which is why I went in the psychology background. Every job I've ever had has been serving people at some level. Mm -hmm. um, I just, now that Medicare is in my life, um, and I've done a ton of annuities. Like I love retirement. I love Medicare. I love life insurance, but something about, there's something about that demographic that I just fit right in sure. to that demographic so well. I mean, when I see my clients light up, no teeth, smiling ear to ear right. in their wheelchair, they're so happy to see me. Like that just does it for me. Right. So I hope that answers your question. I just, and I feel the same way about my agents too. Sure. Yeah. And that, and that's where I wanted to transition to that gives us a little bit of context, but how has that helped you become a better leader? Um, how do you implement that in, in your, in your uh, agency? So, uh, you know, when I've been licensed since 2015 um, and I recruited from day one because that was the deal. Yeah. And I lost a ton of agents because I was learning and developing into who I am now. And I have so much more to learn. I have the best leaders mentoring me right now. Um, but so it's, it's, you don't make it like somebody needs to tell you guys, you never arrive. That's right. That's <laughs> if good. If you arrive, you're not, yeah. you're not. Right. So like you'll never arrive. And you can ask any of the big wigs in the industry. If they've arrived, they will tell you they have not. Right. Um, but um for me, it's just, I, I, you know, I hired and recruited so many people and saw them fall off that I thought, you know, I got to, and I'm sick and tired of answering the phone. Like I went through a big adrenal fatigue time, like in spending COVID. And like, it was just like, wham, smack, you go from this to this. And how can I automate some of this stuff and make it so that they have access when I'm not available because now I'm married. Now I have kids. I'm not the I have a giant, if you could see it in some of my other trainings, I have a giant Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. Sure. Picture, I mean, it's this big. That yeah. was my nickname. But yeah. like now I'm not, right? I am, but like now I'm like mommy Terminator. Sure. So yeah, I got you. I had to automate some yeah. of these processes and it's helped our team tremendously because they can just point and click and go. But just so you know, I'm not answering the phone any less. Mm. I have been able because of Medicare and just grateful clients that send me referrals, I'm able to now, I'm not running a hundred appointments a month, which is the blueprint. Right. right. I don't do that anymore. I can't, I do. Well, sometimes I do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when you get the itch, you get it right, Rob. Like yeah. you just like, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. That's why I love interviewing people like you. I, I interviewed, uh, interviewed Ryan Lodi a, a couple of months ago. Oh, Ryan is and, such uh, I love connecting with high energy people. So that's, that's kind of where I want to go and, and got a couple of questions here. I love the energy and the passion, like from the very beginning when we started, because I'm that way. And I, I was reading a blog post on you and you were talking about, there was a, a fear or a limiting belief. And one of the things you said in there 
and I'm going to put it in my words, uh, paraphrasing, but I've had to learn that it's okay to not be everyone's flavor because I am a lot. I, I, as I've gotten older, I'll be 47 in a couple of weeks, but I've learned how to temper that and be more strategic in different circles. But I'm a big energy guy. I love passionate energy people. So I saw you post that on a blog post. So, so tell me, um, how did you overcome that? And I think it's something we always overcome and we have to continually mature in. But for a long time, I just, you know, I'm loud, I'm energetic. I mean, tell me how you've dealt with that as you've grown in your leadership. So early on, and if I'm being truthful, even now, somewhere when I was a kid, I needed that validation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've always been an overachiever. So even now, it was really bad when I first started, but even yeah. now, when I get wind or feel yeah. like I'm just not meshing with somebody, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just like, oh, dude, why? Like, cause I, yeah. like Cody says it all the time. Yeah. Like I want to help as many insurance yeah. agents as possible. Yeah. Right. And so when I'm not vibing or, or I'm clashing with somebody and I know I'm not somebody's cup of tea, right. I, I learned something that helped me. Number one, pass them along. Mm. It's okay. People, we are not agent slavery. Forget the yeah. whole right. hierarchy restraint. Right. Right. Let that go. You're doing more damage, keeping them with you when they can thrive somewhere else. Let them go. Yep. Sign the release. Do it. Right. That's number one. Number two, though, is how you say something like, I'm going to say something to you, Barbara. Do I have, it might be a little rough. Right. <laughs> Do you give me permission to say what sure. I'm about to say? Sure. And they're like, sure. Boom. <laughs> Door yeah. open. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So once they give you permission, let them have it. Yeah. But yeah. I've learned how to be more feminine and not as masculine, just case by case, client by client, agent by agent. Yeah. And that's so good. I mean, I, and, and I truly believe as I've gotten older and I also believe this, my faith has helped me be um, more aware of that. I believe the greatest, most successful people in the world are the most self-aware people, right? That they take an audit. They have people in their lives that are, can speak truth in their lives and go, Hey, that's a blind spot. Learn how to, cause you know, I, I know personalities that have a high energy. Sometimes they can be taken the wrong way. So I love that you've grown and, and you've matured in that yourself. And of course, like I said, I tell people I'm always growing. Like you said earlier, it's, I'm not perfect at it. Sometimes I let that, I don't know if I eat too much salsa or what, but I, sometimes I get that, that Hispanic blood comes out on me and, and I say things too. Oh, too I'm a, oh, oh, are you, I get, are you Italian? Are you from Jersey? Are you yeah, from New York? Yeah. 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 So I, I definitely uh, understand that. So let me ask you this. And I know it's a cliche question to ask, but I always like to ask people and I have a reason to ask, what is your definition of success? I know it's subjective and, and it's different for everybody, but do you mind sharing that what your definition of success is? Well, it would not be to retire. <laughs> retirement is not success to me. A comfortable retirement is not even success to me because I don't see that I'll ever retire. Mm. I feel like I will always be serving for my whole life. Mm. Um, but success to me is being able to pick and choose where my children go to school. That's good. Having the flexibility to um, do it myself if I want. Yeah. Um, working all over the globe if I want because you can um time you can't good night my dad all the time he's like I still feel 20 I still feel like I can get on that motocross bike and go back and ride for Honda and I'm just like you're gonna break your neck yeah but I value time I mean something happens between like 30 and 34 where you're just like Shoo. yeah where did that go? Yep. And things just start moving faster, I feel like. Sure. And then you just feel like, oh my gosh, I'm late to the party. Yeah. Slow down, find something, get in it with all you got. Yeah. Do not have shiny object syndrome. Oh, I used yeah. to get shiny object syndrome so Guilty. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But but if you can stop and slow down and really go, 
and and Justin just posted the blueprint, you know, a while back for if he was starting over, he posted, if he started over, this is what he would do. And yeah. I shared it with everybody because even you and I can post if we were starting over, here's what we would do. And yeah. I say that to all these ladies in the group that are Debbie Downers, because I'm like, please just, just do, do as I say, not as I did. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. No, that's great. But yeah. but yeah, success would be would be that it would be having people say you know what would really be great success to me would be having somebody say leslie made a huge impact in my life yeah i would love that man that that i that's awesome so let me ask this a part b to that would you say that definition has changed from when you first started because i i believe mine has as i've matured and grown as a leader would would you agree with that oh yeah Oh yeah. When I first started, it was how fast can I get to 500 K? Yeah. Now it's how fast can I get to 25,000 Medicare apps? (laughs) Yeah. 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 But seriously, like, because here's why the service to Medicare fills me. Mm. Those people, I would rather have those apps than 500,000. I want the apps than the, than the money because the apps mean the experience of the people and I help mm-hmm. people get to their doctors I bring them groceries yeah. I have an automatic thank you card birthday card doggy thank you card they call them, I've had I got a voicemail right now I can play it for you you're the only person that sent me a birthday card this year wow yeah. I can't believe you remembered my anniversary right. 50 years we had an anniversary I will never lose that client yeah I can't believe you remembered my cat's birthday and name. Wow. I, mean, I pay so close attention to detail with my yeah. clients because I have to do something different because it's this business is a turn and burn. Yeah. And I don't have the wobbly, shaky little man that yeah. <laughs> you guys have yeah. out sitting yeah. in your office. Yeah. No, and and listen, I'm going to stop right here. If you're watching this, she is bringing it. She's sharing with you some value that uh, you would only learn a lot of times in behind the scenes masterminds. I mean, this is the details matter when it comes to your clients. Um, and I love the fact that you're doing the the doggy uh, card as well. And and I tell people this that the more impact you make, and you know this in your business, the more impact you make the income will follow, but you have too many people chasing income first and not wanting to make an impact. But I have seen it true in my life and the successful people that I follow that the greater the value, the greater the impact. It's like the money just comes back. And we've heard it said many, many times by the late Zig Ziglar, right? If we want to get everything we want in life, we got to help as many other people get what they want in life. Yeah. Like stop focusing on the dollar. If you could just say how many, this is why in the blueprint, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little nugget. I'll give you a little nugget. Okay. hundred families a month. Mm. Just see a hundred families a month or shoot for a hundred families a month. Yeah. Stay, say the word family instead yeah. of lead. Yeah. Say I got a hundred leads this week. Instead of leads, say I got a hundred families. This I'm week. writing that I got down. 42, I got 42 brand new families this week. Right. I got a brand new batch of families. Wow. Yeah, it makes it more and personal. Stop talking about applications. When you're turning in your apps, tell your manager I got just turned in eight families. <laughs> yeah. That's just man, that. that's gold right there. Thank you for sharing that, Leslie. So let me ask you this because I, I I'm taking notes as you're talking here. You're teaching me a lot of stuff, and thank you for, for being generous this morning. Um I've struggled with shiny object syndrome at 46 years old. I've gotten a lot better at it. I think some of it's just my makeup. I get excited. I get bored real easy. I like fresh and new. I like pioneering new things, but give us a tip or two, how you've learned how to conquer that more in your life. The shiny object syndrome. My only shiny object syndrome is my makeup. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So how do we get past shiny object syndrome? Sure. I actually have, um, I actually did a, a, like, I want to say I did a podcast on this, but I didn't because I don't have a podcast. It's coming. I am. I did a webinar on this. Um, so what I usually do now, I learned the hard way. Okay. Let me tell you what not to do first. Don't do it. (laughs) Okay. Think on it for 24 to 48 hours first. Number one, 
Number two, take it to somebody who's making more money than you. Mm, that's good. And say, hey, something came across, just like this, just like multi-level. Something came across my desk, Jerry. I want you to take a peek at it. Right. Is this something right. I should look into? If sure. the person above you making all the dollars mm. ain't doing it, I ain't doing it. If Tyler Reese, Tyler Reese is my dude, okay? If Tyler Reese ain't doing it, and he doesn't even respond to my text, that's an answer. Yeah. Okay? That's yeah. step two. So number one, don't do it. Sleep on it for 38, 40, what did I say? Two days. Yeah. Ask the highest paid person in your circle. And also you need to pray about it. Yeah. That's yeah. how, that's the order of operations. Pray to pray about it first. Yeah. While you're sleeping on it, put them together. <laughs> that's one. Yeah. Step one, pray about it for 24 hours. Step two, ask somebody making more money than you. Yeah. And it's interesting that you find out because, and you know this, I mean, I've been in MLM. I was reading a blog post where you're doing some of those side hustles oh. as well, you know, yeah. and, and that's great. I, I love it. I mean, yeah. but what I have found is I have grown as a leader and really studied and, and, and really matured is that a lot of them didn't do any side streams of incomes until they mastered the one, until they were had got a PhD in that one, and then they broke off from there. Have you seen that as well? Master your craft, yeah. 100%. Everybody, there's plenty of books, Grant Cardone, tons of people get seven, seven streams of income, right? Get that going. But like, I feel like that would be divinely placed mm. when it's time and those answers will come. Yeah. That's the way that I view it. Yeah. So like I, I'm literally looking at it. I'm literally getting ready to start like a, a, a towing company. Sure. <laughs> it just landed, it landed <laughs> in my lap. It's yeah. something my husband wants to do. Two up, two down, VA all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're calling it. Two yeah. up, two down sewing. Like it just landed in my lab. It'll be great. And then also I have the coaching stuff that I do. So this will be three streams of income. Yeah. But in, in 2015 though, it was hustle, grind, survive. Yeah. We want to take the hustle and the grind. All this hustle and grind. Like I grew up, grew up in the insurance business, grew up on Eric Thomas, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like grind, hustle, I grind, yeah. I hustle, I grind. At some point though, especially for women, and it is totally different for women in this business than it is for men, um, for multiple reasons. That's a separate podcast probably, but you know, hustle and grind. Now we want to go with ease. Mm. With, now we want to do this with ease. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I, I'm a big ET guy. I loved him when he came to 8%. I knew he was coming. Oh. He's just an That's why I bought my ticket. Yeah. Don't tell Cody. No, yeah, no, no. That's, I'm gonna be and honest. That's like one breakout, of the breakout. Fire. Yeah. Done. Let's go. Honest, honest confession. Me too. I love ET. Yes. Uh, consume his content, and he's just an atmosphere changer. But I agree with you. I like to say it this way: that the hustle and the grind get you there, right, to the point where you need to be. But then I had to learn how to work smarter, yeah. right. And and so you had to do what you had to do to survive. I've been there. But then as I get around smart people like you and others, and I learn from them then I learned how to work smarter, not necessarily harder. So thank you for sharing that. I ask everybody that comes on, on the podcast this, if there was one word you would use to describe yourself, um, what would that one word be? Influential. Okay. So how has being influential help you achieve the success that you've achieved in your business? I make people move. Mm. I hate to wait. I'm an activator. I'm super competitive. I'm commanding and, and I'm strategic. I, um, I make people move. I, I have a gift where I can sit with either an agent or a client and I can sit with a client and in a matter of 10 minutes, five minutes, figure out where all the leaks are. And I have this way where I can just show them how to do it and explain to them why they need to do it. And they have no other option, but to do it or they're screwed. And I will not be leaving the home like that because I wouldn't do it to my mom and dad. Yeah. And all of my strengths together do it all for me, like working together. I, I just, it, it makes my, it's my makeup. It's who I am. Um, and, you know, for the agent, I'm the same way I can in a matter of 
after I talk to an agent, you know, I, I have coaching calls with agents, right? I, people pay to talk to me. And I'm like, in five minutes, I can figure out exactly what's wrong in their business. Mm. And, and I can give them a blueprint. The end of the call is the blueprint. It's the fixing. I can figure that out in two seconds. But the beginning is always exact. I can figure it out. It's like Christmas morning to me. <laughs> just, I just, I'm very good at, at analyzing what they have going on and giving them a, a game plan. And it, the problem is them implementing. It, the problem is the client buying. The pr problem is the client doing what I showed them they needed to do. Right. Once I put it there, very seldomly do they not do it. I have probably have like an 85, 89% close ratio. Mm. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I just, I make people move. And I mean that in a good way. I make a lot of money move too. We sure. love annuities. Sure. <laughs> yes. Sure. But in that same way, it, 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 it's, it's just activator. Like I hate to wait. We got to go. We got to do it. I, I'm telling you my life is flying by. Right. No, no, I love that. I love that. Listen, two more things real quickly as, as we wrap up here today. Tell me a little bit about the 8% breakout. I didn't get a chance to go to your breakout, but I want to put the link uh, in our video description when this drops in a few weeks. Tell us a little bit about what you were teaching other agents. Well, <clears throat> what I'll do is give you the, I'm thinking about giving you a, re, a replay link. Okay. So, um, but what I can do is when the link that I'll send you would be, cause I wasn't going to give it back now. Cause you know, right. you can't repeat the 2020. <laughs> we can't go back in time and repeat 2021, 8%. If you missed it, bro, you better just go ahead. And you know what I heard a little birdie say we've outgrown the building and tickets are flying right, right. now. So get a ticket for 2022. Boom. We're all going to be there. But 8% Nation Breakout Replay. I do have it recorded. If you want it, reach out. Um, so I literally gave the blueprint. It was called the Six Figure Blueprint. And it was from A to Z in 25 minutes. What type of leads? How many? Scripts? Objections? How to hire? How to fire? Um, how, to, how to recruit agents? How to find clients? Um, shoot, I got the breakdown right here. I probably need to look at it again. Um, appointment setting, schedule, time blocking. Oh, all of the, all of the things we are about action. My blueprint was about action. Everybody else was covering material. None of that matters. If you don't have a schedule, if you don't have clients, families, if you don't have families, if you don't have a stack of families to see none of that matters. So if you're struggling, like if you're struggling with the core mm -hmm. of this business, right. that's where, this is where I thrive. Right. I'm living, breathing proof of the core of this business. I know exactly how many clients you need, what type of clients, income filters, age demographics for every single thing in the business from retirement to healthcare, to life insurance, to final expense. I got it. Everything. Yeah. Well, and no, I couldn't I... squeeze it all into 25 minutes. I was sweating. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, you got the energy and the passion to do it. So, you know, I, I hate that I missed it. I, I, that was one that I wanted to get to. But uh, yeah, would love to definitely check that out sometime. So give us some final words of wisdom, because not only speaking of MLM, I've interviewed some some top home based business people in different companies, seven figure money earners. And because I believe success and leadership principles, it's the same thread, no matter what industry you're in, whether it's insurance, Medicare, final expense, home based business, whatever, financial what are some words of wisdom that you would give to someone out there who's maybe uh, wanting to bet on themselves or wanting to take that first step into saying, hey, I, I need to do something with my life? I have so much. I have so much. Okay. Number one, find a multi-level marketing company and follow the top leader because they know how to build teams mm -hmm. and they know how to motivate. Number two, cut off your radio music gone. It is nothing but podcasts, audiobooks, audible, Eric Thomas, Grant Cardone, like you, Oprah, mm -hmm. Joel Osteen, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. But like music goes bye bye, unless it's worship music, because yeah. there are ruts and rap, tra trap music gets me out of ruts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got two stations. Okay. I got a uh, trap and worship station. Yeah. I'm not hey. even lying to you. So, find you like but those are like for moments of weakness that I have where my mindset is not right okay 
So cutting off the radio is huge. Audible, I mean, in the car, and just if you're not growing, you're dying. And so in this business, if you do not put in 10,000 hours of personal development mm. in your lifetime, you will never develop into the leader that you need to be. And I am in the middle of this right now. And I'm going through a huge growth spurt right now that some of you are probably like, man, this chick's got it all together. No. <laughs> some of you are like, I know her. She's in the middle of a growth spurt right, right now. Right. And right. they're super proud of me. And I promise I will not disappoint you guys. Yeah. Like this is huge. So th those are my, that, that was huge for me. That was, yes. that was yeah. it for me. And also you are, you've heard this a hundred times, yeah. the average of the top five people that are in your circle. So that was life changing for me. Somebody said to me, oh, look at your circle. You're the queen of castle. Yeah. And I was like, I'm at the top of the food chain in my circle. I will never grow here. Yeah. And you right now encourage you guys write down who, I mean, just don't even think about it. Just get, list out the top five people that come to the top of the brain. Boom. That, that's a reflection of where you are in your life. Yeah. You can't write down people that you're listening to on books, people you know. Right. I want to know your core people. Who do you know? That's who you are. Yeah. No, I totally agree because we are so heavily influenced by associations, by our friendships. And I'm always encouraging even myself to purge my circle, to take an audit of my circle because I wanna grow, I wanna get better. And I don't want anybody to have VIP access to my life if they're not already where I wanna be or if they're not headed in that direction. Oh way. gosh, you know why. And we've already yeah. talked about this, like yeah. on a spiritual level, sure. you gotta protect the fortress. Right, yeah, no, I totally agree. That's some great tips. And I wanna go back to the number one, not only in the MLM, but in the insurance or any industry, you know, anytime I got into an industry, I didn't want to talk to the B, the, the, the JV team. I wanted to talk to whoever was on the varsity team. I wanted to go sit with them, ride with them, hear what they were saying, emulate their talk. And it sounds like you're, you, you believe in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I follow some top MLM earners. These women are busting it right now yeah. and they are so inspirational yeah. and they just watching them helps me go. I really need to work on that. Yeah. Well, I want to definitely have you back. So I want to get more into the woman part. I, I, I try to keep these about 40 to 45 minutes, roughly, because uh, I know how attention spans are. But you have brought so much value uh, in this this short pod, video podcast today. Uh, where can we find you? Facebook, TikTok, Instagram? Okay. Where? I need to do a TikTok. Oh, that's my sign. I got to do a TikTok. <laughs> I got to do a TikTok. I need a podcast. Okay. I'm on Instagram. It's I am Leslie underscore Schofield. I'm on Facebook, Leslie Diane Schofield. And you can always find me at LeslieDSchofield.com. Sure. And so I heard you do coaching. Is that how people reach out to you for your coaching? Yes, you you coach? guys, please book a call. I would love if you're one of the people that I talked about a minute ago, that's like, I'm drowning. I need this. I need that. Everybody sucks. Help me. I'm dying. I'm getting out of the business. Don't Yeah. <laughs> book a call. Please call me. Um, just this business. Can you guys hear me for one minute while we're wrapping up? This business changed my life completely. Mm. This business changed my family's life. I have bought my mom a car, cash. Wow. She wrecked it. I bought her another one. <laughs> I needed to remodel a handicapped bathroom for her and my brother. I did that. Wow. I, I, I have been able to help so many people outside of my family. Like, mm -hmm. you guys don't get out of the business. Claw yeah. and fight your way into the success holes of this business because they are waiting for you. People are depending on you. And I want to help you do it. Please, please call me. Yeah. yeah, man, that was some serious fire. And guys, as we close today, just want to remind you again, listen, you deserve to win. Don't quit on yourself, right? Don't, don't make your will for sale. At no cost will you sell your dreams. That's what we're saying here. That's what Leslie is saying here. Reach out to someone. There's people out here in our industry that want to help you. And I believe there's people like that in every industry. Don't yeah. quit. Don't give up on yourself because one phone call with Leslie or someone like myself or whoever 
could put that fresh wind in your sails that you need to go one more day. So that's why I believe in the power of community. I believe in the power of being a servant leader. So thank you for joining us today. God bless you guys, and we will see you guys soon. Thanks for having me.